bringing this to my spirit. Uh, I almost forgot to put this verse in my notes. I'm probably going to end it with this one. And this is a very, yes, I'm going to read it verbatim. Let's go King James Version. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Create in me a clean heart. You know what, God? I went through some things this week and my heart isn't clean. I went through some things this week and I'm fighting depression. I'm fighting discouragement. And I know that's not how you desire me to walk as a child of God. You desire to me to walk in dominion, uh, authority, and victory. I went through some things this week, and I found that I was kind of getting prideful. I was kind of getting jealous. I was kind of wanting revenge. Or I went to work, and I wasn't the best uh, representation of you. I didn't represent you right. Paul says we're sermons written in the flesh. So, Lord, my heart ain't right, so I need deliverance. Creating me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Remember when Jesus um, rebuked the apostles, he said, you know not what spirit you're of. If you look at your life, you'll find even as a believer, sometimes there was times that you did something. You said, man, why did I do that? Why did I think that? Why did I respond like that? Could be demonic influence, demonic spirits. Now, some things, once you recognize it, you just kill it. But if you find yourself, for example, struggling with perversion, um, lust, you're consumed like rage, like it could be a, a demonic spirit. You see what I'm saying? I know people that, yeah, they don't fornicate, they don't commit adultery, they don't do drugs, but they have a rage problem. And you're just driving on the road and rah, rah, probably need deliverance. And so that's, that's how, you know, and so this is where it gets tricky, right? Because so some people will say, oh, you know, I'm just disciplined. I just, I just have self-control. You have a, you can have a demon of pride because here, this is where you want to see in the spirit. People will look at somebody and the areas that they are strong in, they'll look at other people's weaknesses and compare their weaknesses to their strength. And then they look down on them. But if you compare yourself to the righteousness of God, we'll all see that we need deliverance. So let me let me give you an example, right? Another sign that you probably have a religious demon or a religious spirit that you need cast out of you. Um, like I said, oh my theology is so sound. I I don't I don't sin. You know, real Christians don't sin. You're not even being honest with yourself. So that means that you are so, so deceived. If you believe that you're so deceived, I've got God figured out. I've got the complete, even though the Bible says great is the mystery of God. And it's even though God is too big for your little mind, I've got God all figured out. My theology is sound. There's no holes in it. I've never met a church, a denomination, a pastor, where they taught some things, they preached some things where I was like, I don't agree with that. Same thing with me. You don't have to agree with everything. That's why we need the grace of God because nobody, nobody, nobody got it all together. The Bible is too deep. The Bible is too deep for anybody to just completely understand everything from the front to the back. I don't care how many times you read this Bible. Um, Our brethren... He can accuse us. He can slander us. What else can He do? We have temptation. He can tempt, sift, slander, accuse. Can He deceive us? He is the deceiver. And the thing is, with temptation, 
is a lie, right? There's always a lie. Yes, we, anytime He tempts us and we fall into the sin He tempts us into, He's deceived us. What's something else He can do to us? Now, He goes about seeking to devour, but can He actually devour a true Christian? What can He do? Job. With God's permission, what can he do? What did he do? He destroyed his children, his wealth, his health. He can take your health away if God grants him permission, but he asked permission to sift. Let me tell you what he's like a dog on a chain. He can only do what is within that little dog pen that he's allowed to run in. And God can reel the chain in or let it out anytime God determines. Is there any account where a Christian is possessed? There isn't. There isn't. Flesh and blood, but what do we wrestle against? So there's a fight. We can wrestle. He can do battle with us. But when it comes to possession, I, I found several places that, you know, what, is, what does Satan do to lost people that he can't do to us? And what's true of Satan's relationship with lost people? I've been memorizing Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. What's something that's said there concerning... The lost do what? They follow the course of the world. They follow the prince of the power of the air. And what's he described as? The spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. He's at work in them. He's actually got control of them. Can anybody think of somewhere else that Scripture talks about? Isn't he their father? He's their father. He's their Father. 1 John 5.19 says, we know that we are from God, but the whole world does what? It lies in the power of the evil one. He is the Spirit at work in the sons of disobedience. They all lie within His power. He has dominion over them. Does He have dominion over us? No. He that is with us is greater than He that is in the world. In fact, Christ likens Himself to what? The one who is stronger than the strong man and has the ability to come and tie Him up, bind Him up, and take what's His. And that's what He's done. He's freed us. He is no longer our Father. We're no longer in that bondage. We're no longer possessed in that way. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Let me tell you this. I'll tell you another thing Satan cannot do to God's children. He cannot so control us as to move us into a place where we practice sin and don't love the brethren. He cannot do it. Can He tempt us at times to fall into sin? At times to have unloving gestures towards the brethren? Yes. But can He move us into the practice of that? No way. He does not have the power to do it. In fact, if that's true in your life, you are of the devil. You are not of God.